Thank you. Um, thank you for uh, this opportunity to, to speak with you. There are uh, researchers, uh, potential funding partners, uh, uh, organizers. Um, my, my point of view will be for, from the industry side as um, PSO, Transmission System Operator, um, responsible for uh, infrastructure of electricity and uh, also gas. Um, we um, have uh, quite recently, in, in last year, uh, decided that um, the company will also be uh, responsible for the digital area of um, energy um, domain in, in the Estonian context. And uh, one of the reasons why we have found that uh, this is important um, is actually research uh, projects. And uh, I will talk about a little bit uh, what we have done, uh, what have been results, and how <coughs> maybe we find some uh, common ground also. Um, the company itself, um, some basic facts, um, quite good financials and, and uh, some uh, infrastructure. Um, if um, the previous speaker actually very well explained uh, how smart metering works and, and how the data is gathered, uh, and uh, when 2013, uh, we um, joined North Pool uh, market area, which is uh, common in, in the Nordic region, then uh, we had to give feedback to consumer that what is the uh, readings of smart meters and uh, we think that uh, access to these readings, um, not only the end consumer, but also uh, applications that can use the data for the good of uh, uh, consumer, uh, is, is quite important, uh, quite important for the development of the markets. And um, that's why we, we started one uh, project where we were um, um, choosing the tools, software tools, mostly uh, open source uh, components, and um, we uh, use the tools for building the infrastructure for this, that uh, when the readings are from the smart meters are in the one database, then how to make them uh, securely, uh, protecting privacy, available to different applications. And the uh, solution is quite uh, simple, robust, as, as was our uh, data hub uh, for the market opening. It, um, it basically uh, connects uh, data sources, which will have a special security server <coughs> that has uh, adaption functionality and, and security, uh, I mean, message uh, forming uh, functionality, and, uh, and sending these messages to other side where application will get the message and then adapt to the application data. Um, we are not seeing what is inside the message. Um, we just need to know who is sending the message to who. And uh, this is also something that we want to show to application and to data source uh, afterwards, because this transparency is the most important thing. Um, and uh, there will be no huge main database central there will be many, um, mostly utility-owned uh, databases, AME or uh, smart meter readings databases. Uh, and there will be uh, several applications 
uh, we have five first ones in, in operation. Um, this is the, let's say, vertical of, uh, of this uh, architecture. Um, as we see, um, each utility uh, company is, is very uh, focused on securing their uh, infrastructure and uh, there is no big risks involved in, in this. And every application also have to deal with their um, operations. Um, this is a little bit more detailed view of, of this architecture. Um, on the downside, we see that there is data source, the upside application, and this is the administration unit uh, on the right side. Um, Administration unit consists of uh, message log, audit log, um, some basic administration uh, user interface for uh, connecting new data source and uh, disconnecting data source or uh, application. And basically, this uh, this is the basic uh, setup. Uh, what is quite important and. Uh, we have seen with Denmark uh, colleagues also that um, this authorization uh, needs um, also a good mandate uh, system. It means that uh, I am as a consumer, um, I must give to some application access to my data and in whatever uh, point of t in time I might also reject this um, mandate that uh, I don't use the same application anymore and then it's uh, good to have this control over your data. And we are just at, at this point we are developing the functionality for, for this mandate management. I believe our Denmark uh, colleagues started from uh, April of the first of April uh, with, with this uh, mandate management. Um, and what what is uh, interesting in this uh, that um, not only electricity smart metering is is using this kind of infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, quite similar um, uh, challenges or, or uh, tasks are in um, in gas uh, smart metering. Uh, in Estonia, we have 60,000 uh, smart, oh, not smart, but uh, metering points for the gas, uh, and 750,000 uh, metering point for electricity. And uh, this mass rollout of smart meters will end uh, this year. Um, but uh, also central heating operators um, in Estonia, we have. Uh, about 5,000 smart meters installed and uh, it looks like uh, we will have over 10,000 units in, in two years or three years. And um, it, it can be expanded to the water area also but it's a little bit different uh, regulation side. And um, what, what this picture shows actually is, is that um, there, um, there can be quite uh, good common ground uh, in infrastructure side that is um, valuable to applications to start with, and at the end it is also valuable uh, valuable to consumers who have more choice because um, use of uh, whatever application. It's uh, the free will of the consumer, not something that uh, the government is saying that you must uh, do now that. And uh, we are quite uh, optimistic that uh, these applications that we see are developed today, uh, and business models, new business models, 
um, in Estonia itself, but also in uh, other countries uh, in European or Nordic region. They are uh, quite easily integrated in this, uh, into this uh, uh, model uh, where uh, there is no need to so much um, negotiate with specific utility or uh, negotiate with um, monopoly uh, companies uh, in, in the regulation side. Uh, but uh, it allows, for example, operate uh, aggregators, uh, uh, provide services to different uh, um, market participants. It, it's not uh, only the small consumer. It, it is, uh, at first, mostly uh, bigger consumers. Uh, it will be also beneficial for the grid operators, actually because uh, transparency brings out uh, new business opportunities that utilities are not uh, dealing with uh, today. And uh, that's, uh, that's the picture today. And one uh, simple uh, example that uh, we built up um, for the year 2000, um, 13, 1st of January it opened. Um, we, the, the background story is that uh, it was 2012 or 2011 when uh, we knew that uh, we have to open the market and uh, we have to build up a uh, system for uh, providing metering data to consumer side. And uh, um, the option was to, to take this example, for example, like uh, Denmark or, or uh, France or uh, Netherlands, and try to copy it, uh, the pro main processes, and, uh, and uh, then uh, go on. But um, it, it came out that uh, we had time window, which was very limited. And uh, we made quite robust solution for uh, using uh, not commercial licenses, but uh, open source uh, licenses. And it works today uh, and quite well. So uh, the approach was, was very different than uh, utilities are using uh, today in other um, European countries, um, where uh, vendors, software vendors, are uh, quite actively giving uh, <coughs> advice that uh, you, you must build very complex, very uh, processed, uh, focused uh, systems. Uh, that will be at the end very legacy systems for, for these utility operators and do not allow changes. But uh, if we see the future, let's say five years, then uh, for the utility company the change will come. And it's, it's not a question about that uh, there will be no changes, but uh, will be there more or less. And, uh, how it can be uh, written in in, uh, in laws, but um, this is yes uh, one option to go to make uh, this architecture quite simple, quite robust, uh, but uh, it also allows uh, uh, manage more risks uh, involved in uh, ICT. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe, maybe one or two short questions. Yes, please. Uh, could you explain more about the Estonian market model? You are the only one company which provides these services for metering data, or you have also 
competitors, how, how it works. What is the relation between utility, your company, consumers, just to understand the model? Yes, um, we, um, we have the system where um, there is a distribution um, network operator mm -hmm. who is uh, responsible uh, for installing the smart meter, getting the data and delivering to the DSO. And DSO is responsible for market development and also providing the data to the consumers. Mm -hmm. This is kind of basic. Um, and the service itself um, is um, planned so that uh, it is not um, commercial. It means that application, if you, for example, have a good application idea, you have implemented it and, and you go to its own market, then you uh, build it up, you sign agreement with us, DSO, <laughs> and you get access to this data, API. Uh, it means that uh, you can change the messages uh, between them, uh, other market participants. Mm -hmm. And um, we are also uh, working with uh, Latvian and Lithuanian uh, DSOs. Um, today, more on uh, flexibility market side and uh, the plan is that there will be no separate uh, small flexibility markets but there will be one Baltic and Baltic uh, flexibility market which allows um, for example um, if I'm talking about flexibility market then uh, it is mostly uh, we know it about uh, demand response uh, uh, it means that uh, some consumer or a prosumer is willing to uh, uh, switch consumption or production uh, like the greed operator wants to and gets paid for this. Um, and, uh, and of course uh, it, is, uh, it needs aggregation um, and one of the conditions that uh, for this kind of services to develop is, is that uh, we have kind of common infrastructure available.